What's up everyone, Matthew and Cena here, and today I'm gonna show you guys how to make this abstract surreal collage image that we've been making for our channel on the future. Uh, I've been making a bunch of the thumbnails for all the videos, and I just wanted to break down this image and show you guys step by step how I came to make one of these things. First, I, I wanna talk about the concept. The concept here was based off of a video that Chris had made for the channel and it was this two minute challenge and it was called Limiting Beliefs, Unlocking Unlimited Potential. So the idea in the video is that you take these words that have a negative association or a connotation for you and you flip them by giving them a new meaning. So I wanted to create some kind of image that would convey that in an interesting way and become a, a dynamic image for the thumbnail. So I came up with this and the ideas that I was thinking of when I thought of that concept was retraining your brain, unlocking, so I was thinking about keys and locks, and then I'm also thinking about uh, what that means for you. That's just like opening up something different, there's transformation. So this is my thought process as I'm thinking about conceptually what the video is about and what it needs to convey. And these go into uh, what I'm considering when I'm looking for images. So getting into this, I went to search on some stock websites and I was looking for a couple of things. Let me pull open bridge here so you guys can see that. First I started with the brain, right? Because that was my first thing that I was thinking about. So I was looking at uh, heads, just silhouettes, and then literal brains, because I was thinking maybe I could have some kind of brain and maybe it's like opening up or changing colors or something. It's, it's trying to transform. Uh, maybe there's a key that triggers and unlocks your brain. And then I found this very cool image as I was doing my stock search. So when I saw this, this became the anchor of what I was thinking of developing. So my goal was to take this as the key image and combine that with something to do with the brain. So if I go back to my brain catalog, at first I was thinking maybe it goes with this brain image, but the problem with this is that this image is positive in terms of this is a white value, a light value here, and this is a dark value here. And if we go back to the other image, this negative space right here is white and the positive space is black. So it would be very difficult for me to combine those two things. So then I found this image, this illustrator file right here. I'm gonna take this silhouetted guy. I'm gonna go into Photoshop. I'm gonna start a new document. I'm gonna paste this as a smart object right now so it retains the vector data there so I could scale this up and it's not gonna lose any detail. I'm gonna push tab to bring up my other menus. And then before anything, I'm gonna start naming my layers. Little tip here, make sure you name all of your layers and never leave anything untitled, or at least try not to. And I'm gonna go back to my assets and I'm gonna pull this image right here. This one with this man pushing the wall down. And then I'm gonna drop this right on top of the head here. I'm gonna turn down the opacity because what I'm gonna try and do is see where these things are going to line up. So more or less I want it to line up here because I want this to feel like this little character right here, he's pushing down this barrier, this wall, and he's unlocking the path to this new way, this new positive way of thinking, right? Just like the concept in the video. So I'm holding option and I'm clicking between this so it will just only apply it to this layer. So that's pretty cool. Now it's silhouetted right there. It's looking pretty rad. Problem is, look, the image ends right here and I have this goofy space, which I don't like. Let me just make a new layer and I'm gonna call this patch. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the clone tool, clone stamp, this is what I'm looking for. Boom. So what the clone stamp does is you sample a section, which I'm going to sample this guy right here. I'm gonna turn this off real quick. I'm gonna turn off the screen. I just want to focus on this layer only. So if you look at the settings for the clone stamp, I'm just going to change it to current and below. So this layer and below. So the way this works is I'm going to sample a section. I'm going to hold option right here or alt. Select that section and now I can create a patch with that same thing. You see how that works? It's magic. It's all right if I'm a little sloppy here. Just, you see, 
Now I created this cool extension of what was above, but the problem is you see it feels like I got a little bit of his leg and it totally feels like it was just clone stamp. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take other areas and I'm gonna start varying it and just start patching this up real quick. So I'm just pulling different areas, just mixing and matching so it doesn't feel so stampy. And I'm just trying to hide the seams as much as possible. All right. Okay. I don't need to get too caught up in details here because I could always come back and add more. So I'm going to hold Command E. So now they're part of the same layer. They're one layer. Call this keyhole. And then apply it only to the head right there. See that? Now it feels like we got this seamless bit right here. Okay, so I think I have the center, the anchor of my image. So the next thing, I wanna give this a more interesting background. I downloaded a bunch of these cool uh, paper torn assets just for textures. Back in the day when I was in college, I made a lot of these by hand. I would just take a bunch of scraps and rip them out of magazines, paste them on something, either scan them or photocopy them over and over and over to get these very, very cool textures. And I used to carry a hard drive, maybe a 200 gigabyte hard drive of just textures. And it was very, very fun to make. But nowadays I have more resources than I do time. So I just go to stock sites and I purchase these things because it's a lot easier for me to do. But I highly encourage a lot of you guys just to make this on your own just for the fun part of the process. Okay, now what I'm looking for is just something that's a little textural that's going to give me something interesting in the background. So some of these are very cool with seeing these types and letter forms behind it, but I think they're ultimately too busy for this thing because I don't wanna break the silhouette of that head. I want to keep it relatively simple. So I'm going to pick this guy right here. And it looks like this is just like white paint over black or vice versa. And what I want to do is for someone to move it down a layer. And then I'm going to scale this up. And right now I'm just looking at the positive and negative values because I'm trying to break this thing up a little bit. Like maybe it's kind of cool on the shoulder. So this is cool, but the problem is you can see the values are just pretty much the same here. So I'm gonna go up to image and adjust, and I'm gonna adjust the curves on this texture right here. So you can see that there's no black values here, so I'm just gonna bring this curve down, down. So we're starting to get some black in the background right there. Now we're getting more separation on this guy. I'm gonna put the mil mid values down. I'm actually gonna blast the white values up a little bit because I want those to remain relatively flat. I have this very deep S curve here, especially in the, the low values. I'm gonna put OK. So this is pretty cool, but I want a little color. So I'm gonna name this first uh, BG Texture. Whenever you see BG, MG, or FG, those are little acronyms I use for foreground, midground, and background. So color-wise, I wanna pick something that's pretty bright and red. You can see I kinda of have something sampled already, but I really, I'm a sucker for this persimmon color where it's very orange with a lot of red in it. I'm gonna add this to the background, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this color layer, put it underneath my BG texture, and I'm gonna change my BG texture to screen. So it's just gonna take the light values and screen that on top of the color layer. Okay, so now I can move this around. Even though I liked this shape before, I kind of like this deep red back here. I'm just looking at this from a formal standpoint. What's gonna make my eye move around the canvas a little bit? And I kind of like this uh, wavy line going up in a diagonal. I could also try and see what happens if we make this a little bit more straight. I'm not a fan of these values up here in this left and right corner. They're a little distracting, so let me see if I could paint those out. Push B for brush, and I'm going to make this full opacity. Now, all I'm doing is I'm just patching out and I'm painting the areas where I don't want these somewhat distracting textures and lines and shapes. <clears throat> I think for the head, I'd like to make the values of this darker. Because if we do this, this is a little trick I do sometimes. I'll take a hue and saturation, 
put it right at the top and then turn the saturation all the way down and I just study the values. And what I'm seeing is that the value of the background is still very close to the value of this head right here. So if you squint your eyes, it's, it's hard to fully read the silhouette here. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna select my head group here and I'm gonna create curves. Again, hold option and click between the layers. So now my curves are only going to apply to this head right here. I'm going to take the dark values on this curve and I'm going to bring them down. I'm also going to bring down the midtone values and I'm just now I'm just looking at the silhouette of the head, right? I want to bring that down. Even the white values, I kind of want to bring that down. They're a little too intense because I want this to read as one silhouette and I want to reserve most of the light values for this background and this keyhole right here. And I know what you're thinking, you're like, "Well, dude, now that keyhole looks like crap. <laughs> Doesn't look that good." cool thing is it comes with a mask right here so you just use black and white values to paint in or out where you want that effect so I'm gonna use a I'm gonna push B for brush and I'm gonna use the black value to paint this part back in I actually is adding this cool little like a glow effect almost right it feels like the light is coming out of this cavity inside this guy's head I want to add a little bit more dimension here so I want to add another object in the scene. As I was mentioning earlier, I was thinking about the concept and what images came to mind and this image came to mind, this key, because I was thinking about keys, unlocking, locks. So naturally I was looking for a vintage looking key because I thought this was super cool. And I'm going to go to my selection tool by pushing W. This is the magic wand tool in Adobe Photoshop 2019 they have this cool thing where you could just click select subject and it's super smart look boom it already knows what I'm looking for so that's my key and I'm gonna click this button down here and make a layer mask there's this key that feels like it's unlocking this guy's brain flip horizontal so maybe it's kind of leading us because I like this angular line where this key is leading us visually towards the keyhole. Next thing I want to do is because this is a paper collage style, I want to make it feel like this key is actually something that was printed on a piece of paper or from a magazine and we cut it out. So there's a couple ways to do that. The way I'm going to use right now is I'm going to go to my effects here. I'm going to add stroke, wherever is that? Oh, yep, I'm going to add a stroke here and I set this to the outside. That's not quite what I want. But, you know, I'm gonna start right here. So I'm making a layer behind the key, and I call this paper fill. And now I'm gonna push L for the lasso, trying to make it feel like I use broad scissors and just fill this in. Like, I wanna preserve some of the nice details that were cut out from the magic wand and the stroke that I added on the outside but I want to give this a little bit more natural imperfection. I'm going to fill that in. So now I have this cool paper cutout key. What I want to do is I want to give that a little bit more dimension. So I'm going to add a little bit of a drop shadow effects and add a drop shadow. Cool. I got a little dimension from this keyhole here. This face is standing out from the background. You know, maybe we make the face feel like it's being pushed back a little bit more. So I'm going to go to this head layer right here. I'm going to go to effects and I'm going to go to inter inner shadow. In the inner shadow, I just want to give a little bit of shadow on the edges going in. So it feels like this is actually protruded back from the red background that we have here. So very, very subtle things here just to give us more depth. I think we can move into finishing touches now. Because this is a collage, I want to make this feel very tactile, as tactile as possible. So if I go back to Bridge, I'm going to go to this folder here called Paper Textures. I downloaded just a few paper textures. Usually what I like to do is take one of these and put it over everything, just so it feels like everything has a nice tactile feel to it. So let's go. I'm going to set this to Multiply, and you can see right away it's adding some really cool details across the board. I mean, that's looking pretty nice. So this is good just for an overall look, but what I actually want to do is add uh, some specific textures to this key, this cutout key here. I'm going to use this paper texture down here, drag this in, 
and hold the option and have it just apply to that key right there. First, I'm gonna set it to screen, but you can see that layer is just so bright right now. So I can do a couple things and I'm gonna invert it. Command I, it's adding the slightest amount of texture to that. But it's all of these subtleties that adds up that make it feel a little bit more real. I think I'm pretty happy with this. You have the key that's bringing us in visually from the top right corner of the frame. It's leading us to this keyhole, which you realize is the silhouette of this guy's head. And then you see this little character as the last read who is pushing the barrier down, unlocking his mind, which is the concept of the video that Chris made, unlocking your unlimited potential. So that's the tutorial. Hopefully you guys were able to follow along. If you have any questions, make sure to put it in the comments section below and don't forget to give us a like and subscribe. I'd love to do more of these types of videos, but only if you guys are paying attention and if you guys value this type of stuff, let us know. And if you guys are interested in learning more about how to master Photoshop, photo compositing, and how to make very dynamic frames that tell stories, uh, consider taking my style frames course, which I've put in the description below. All right, guys, that's it. I will see you guys on the next episode.